Well, Bear, we've made a circle. We've come back to Guinea Station, and we're here at the Chandler Plantation. Well, sadly we are, Scott, but let's take a walk in the house and take a look at where Jackson spent the last six days of his life. All right, I'd like that. So this is the bedroom where Jackson died, and you said that some of these furnishings were the ones that were actually here when that happened. That's correct, Scott. The fireplace mantle you see here was original. The Ingram clock with an ominous ticking was the last thing Jackson ever heard as original. And of course behind us is the actual bed that Jackson died in, and that includes the blanket that's laid on the bed right here. Amazing, I almost feel like I'm intruding, but tell me, did Jackson's persona change any? Not a bit. In fact, I'll give you a couple examples of that. It started the moment he arrived here on Monday, the evening of May 4th. As he was carried into the yard, he apologized to the owner of Fairfield Plantation, Thomas Chandler, for not being able to shake his hands. We sometimes forget that Stonewall was also wounded in his right hand, but he was always professional in his demeanor. Jackson seemed to be doing pretty well through the next day. He, in fact, had a very long and deep religious discussion with one of his aides, James Power Smith. But during a nap, he began to cry out, Major Pendleton, send in. See if there's higher ground behind Chancellorsville. That sort of was letting us know some things to come, I guess. But now, what about that other side of Jackson, his family? What about Anna, his daughter, Julia? Well, it was Tuesday evening before they really even get back into this story. You see, the Union Cavalry had torn up the RF&P Railroad between Guinea Station and Richmond. And Anna's brother, Joseph Morrison, was dispatched from Guinea Station to go get Anna and Julia down in Richmond. But he didn't even make it there until Tuesday evening. When did they get here? Well, not until Thursday at noon. Anna didn't get to see Stonewall until he took a turn for the worse. And Dr. McGuire can't even believe Jackson is actually developing pneumonia. How did it go when Anna first saw him? Well, not well. When Anna leaned over to kiss him, Stonewall did manage to look at her and say, I'm very glad to see you looking so bright. But then he lost consciousness. And Anna later wrote that he, he looked like a dying man. Well, things went downhill fast after that. Yes, they did. Um, Stonewall began to realize that he didn't have much more time left. But he, he really reassured everybody around him that he was fine with God's will. At one point, he asked to see Chaplain Lacey. The old warrior charged his chaplain with promoting better observance of the Sabbath in the Army. And when Chaplain Lacey asked Jackson if he should come into Jackson's room the next morning for worship service, Stonewall insisted that he was most needed to preach to the Second Corps soldiers. And then came the fateful Sunday. Sadly, it did. Uh, Dr. McGuire informed Anna, and then Stonewall himself, that death was at hand. As with a custom in those days, Anna brought his daughter Julia to him. Julia brought a smile to his face and he greeted her warmly. Anna wrote that he then closed his eyes as if committing her to God. While he was unconscious and delirious most of the day, he did manage to say at one point, this is the Lord's day. My wish is fulfilled. I have always desired to die on Sunday. And at the end? Well, he went into a deep coma, and a, and a very interesting thing happened. He began narrating the dreams he was having in that coma, and they began going backwards in time at a very rapid pace. They began at Chancellorsville, with him giving orders to Major Pendleton. Then he saw himself leading the Army of the Living God. He regressed back through his battles in the Civil War and the Mexican War. He saw himself at West Point, but then he paused. He had arrived at his boyhood home at Jackson's Mill on the West Fork River. With serenity, his final words were, let us cross over the river and rest under the shade of the trees. <laughs>